Hi, we're here today and we're going to talk about how you apply the 24 steps in a very, um, very good concrete situation with two of our students, Adam Blake and Max Feinhessage. And um, they were students here at MIT and they um, were determined to start a company or interested, say, shall we say, when they first got here and then they became more and more determined. Um, they tried different things and then they, they found each other and then they, they ultimately found an idea which has become Thrive Hive which they're going to talk about. So before we start, Adam, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you became an entrepreneur, and then Max, you can do the same thing. Adam? Okay. Yeah, so I started out um, after undergrad, wasn't really sure what I was going to do, uh, looking for a job, and then fell into entrepreneurship, and that was an immediate fit. Um, so this is my third startup. I've done a venture back startup. I've done a bootstrap startup. Now I'm back on the venture capital side, and uh, that's how I got into it. Good. Max, how about yourself? Right. So for me, it was really uh, entrepreneurship was the dinner table conversation for my family. So I uh, started my own business um, after a stint as an engineer, uh, graduating from undergrad, and decided to come to Sloan to really go uh, sort of take it to the next level in terms of entrepreneurship for software technology and getting to the startup scene here in Boston. And MIT was the perfect sort of launchpad for that. And Adam, you're from Connecticut originally, correct? Uh, yeah, Connecticut and California. I've got the sort of bi-coastal parents thing going on. Great. And Max? So yeah. I'm originally from Costa Rica. Yeah, my mm -hmm. family is uh, from Poland and Germany, but I'm second generation Costa Rican. So it's, it's good, I think, to have diversity on the team, but you guys share common values. And uh, you came together at MIT and Sloan School of Management at MIT and uh, have really created a nice, nice company. Um, so tell us about ThrivePod. Uh, yeah, so ThriveHive is a guided marketing solution for small business owners. Uh, so it's, we're fundamentally a software company, uh, we're a data company, and we use our software and our data to empower small business owners to grow their business, and that, that's what we're all about. Excellent. So we're going to talk about a few things, but let's start with the persona. Max, do you want to talk about how you develop the persona and the ex your whole experience in that process? Yeah. So. Um, we started the company and got some people into the beta for our prototype product and very early on we knew we wanted to develop personas and it was hard to sort of take the time and the resources that it was going to take and we were putting it off and putting it off and um, looking back it was really something that drastically changed how we perceived and uh, sort of not only the business but also the product development and multiple aspects of the company. So um, one good day, really with a push from one of our advisors, we said, okay, this is it. We have to get this done because it's going uh, to make a difference, and it did. So we got all the team uh, in, in one room, and we developed a, pro a process that we we're going to follow. It started really with interviews, questionnaires, you know, coming up with what are the right questions we need to ask um, you know, people we're going to interview to understand you know, who they are, what characteristics uh, define them, uh, what type of... Uh, you know, very personal traits they have, you know, whether it's from the technology perspective, how tech savvy they are, how marketing savvy they are, uh, but also uh, some, some very nuanced questions like, I remember one that really sort of uh, comes to the top of my mind, which is, you know, if you had a leaky faucet at home, would you fix it yourself? Would you uh, get a friend to help you fix it? Or would you actually hire someone to do it for you? And you're trying to get really deep into understanding, you know, how, how they perceive, you know, problems, how they attack them, because we're trying to really um, sort of segment out different types of personalities, and, and that was sort of the, the first uh, step. So we conducted those interviews. They were pretty uh, deep conversations, hour-long conversations, all of them recorded. Um, <coughs> those then got transcribed into uh, you know, uh, doc documents that we could actually sh uh, share around with the team, and again, did a little workshop with everyone in the company, including developers, customer service, sales, uh, everyone. Everyone was, was involved and had to be involved. And uh, we started sort of mapping out each one of these interviews into uh, you know, so trying to distill out, you know, what are the characteristics, the roles they play within their companies, uh, what they see as other motivators, their goals, and so forth. Um, so that's kind of the first uh, steps we took, and maybe you want to explain from there how we condense them into the personas. Uh, yeah, sure. So we uh, took all of that data, um, put them all up on a wall, um, had everybody sort of start mapping back um, segments from the interviews and describing characteristics for each of the individuals that we interviewed and uh, you know put these up on big sheets of paper everybody put down these characteristics and then at, after we had done that we started putting the big sheets of paper together that we thought matched so we said alright this kinda looks like one type of personality here one type of persona so let's put them all together we ended up with a, a actually a couple of groupings and then a couple that didn't fit. Um, and so from that we 
developed our primary persona, um, our secondary persona, and then we took a look at the ones that weren't really fitting um, and then also sort of thought about the customers that we had had that had already left the, the platform and came up with an exclusionary persona as well. Um, so we ended up with three personas and um, uh, they've, they've been working really well. We act actually, the people that we interviewed for those personas that we thought didn't fit, that became the exclusionary persona, they've actually since churned. Mm -hmm. they, they, they've churned and left you? Yeah, yeah. so we so that, correctly identified them in that process. Yeah. That's excellent. So as you, we've looked about at the persona here for Thrive Hive, we've seen a few things. First of all, um, it's something that brought the team together and really got alignment amongst the entire team. And it was a process that took a while, founded in, in uh, primary market research. And secondly, you developed a, a primary and secondary persona, but then you also developed the exclusionary persona, which helped bring discipline to your organization. Yeah, and especially on sales. I mean, yeah. the <laughs> sales guy starts trying to sell to that person, no, look, here's the picture, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, when, when you talk about alignment and bringing the team together, so we actually printed out all of these personas, you know, we came up with a photo that represented each one of them, a name, of course, and then some of the key characteristics, and all of them are like around the office, so like the salespeople, they're looking at these personas all day. When they're on the phone, they're trying to identify, am I talking to the primary, the secondary, or the exclusionary? And when the team uh, in the product side is building a feature, are we building something that our primary persona is going to actually use and sort of see that's a lot of value? Or are we building something that the exclusionary persona is going to actually enjoy because we shouldn't be doing that? Mm -hmm. and so it really aligns all of the different functions within the company. Wow, if you figured out how to control salespeople, you've done something <laughs> extraordinarily <laughs> valuable. It's called clawback. <laughs> <laughs> it's called incentives, money. 